Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kristen and today I'm taking you along with me to Ikea so we can do a little bit of buy this, not that. I'm going to share with you all the products that you should stop buying from Ikea and which products you should buy instead. So we'll go through all the different departments, going through lighting, furniture, decor, all the little household essentials you need for your home so I can share with you all the best pieces. If you enjoy watching and find this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button and let's go ahead and head to Ikea. All right, let's get right into the sofa section because this is such a huge area of Ikea. There's so much to choose from. So let's break it down by style. If you're looking for a modern sofa, a lot of people tend to choose this Soderham modular sofa. This is very low profile. You can kind of configure it in different shapes. It comes in different colors, but this is a sofa I would pass on. I'm not a fan of the chrome legs and I've done a sit test on it and there's no comfort and cushion to this sofa. So it just doesn't seem worth it to me. If you're trying to go after that modern style, I highly recommend this sofa line instead. This is the Applard sofa line and this is a gorgeous sofa. This is one of those sofas that can work with so many different styles, but it definitely looks modern. It also has that pillowy look to it that's very similar to the laid back look of the other one, just a little bit more put together and tapered. I love the shape of this sofa. The cushions are actually very comfortable and it's just a sofa that looks nice and feels nice. And that's exactly what you should be buying in a sofa. The seat depth is a deep, comfortable depth and this sofa comes in different colors. So it's the gray, a really beautiful rust and blue. Another great option if you're going for that modern look is this new sofa line. This is called the Smedstorp. This is a little bit more mid-century modern because you have those tapered legs, but the style, the shape, and the finish of the sofa is great. You can choose a light wood leg or a black leg. I think I prefer the all black look. I think it looks super sleek, but these sofas are also extremely deep. So you get that really comfortable feel to them and the cushion's super soft. Now, if you're actually looking for a sofa that's a little bit more traditional in its style, a lot of people tend to choose this Upland sofa. It kind of looks like the Pottery Barn sofa. It's a super classic shape, but there's something that's messy looking about it and it's not even a comfortable sofa. It comes in different colors colors. You can actually do slip covers for this sofa, but I'd say pass on the Upland sofa and go towards the Harlanda sofa. This has a very similar shape to it. It actually has a higher back, the rounded arms, and it's so much more comfortable. So just by doing a sit test, you can already tell this is a better sofa. It's actually a sofa you'd wanna cozy up on. So I think this is a great choice. This chaise sectional version actually has storage underneath, which is amazing. Great for space saving. And I think everyone could use this extra storage space. They also have a full sectional version that's a sleeper sofa. So you can pull out a bed and it's a great two in one piece. This sofa line also has a variety of different fabric options there's some colors to choose from and there's also some really great neutrals. So I think overall this Harlanda sofa is definitely a better buy. Now onto the Ikea accent chair section. There is so many different styles in here, so let's break it down by style. If you're going after a modern look in your home, I would say pass on the Poang chair. This is Ikea's most famous chair. It's been around for years and years and I'd say it's just becoming a little bit more overdone now. And as soon as you see it, you know it's from Ikea. I feel like this is one of those chairs that people either really love or don't love. I think it's comfortable, it's ergonomic, it's well-designed, but it just doesn't give off that modern luxe feel to it. Instead, I would suggest the Corp chair. This comes in black and gray, and I think the modern leg design makes this chair. It's a very simple, modern, pretty basic chair on top, but that leg design just makes it look high-end and more luxe. It's very comfortable. The back has a lot of cushion to it. The seat has a lot of soft cushion, so it's a comfortable seat to sit in. The back actually has a really cool design to it as well. It has these pockets that you can put books, remotes, throw blankets in, and it's just a great all-in-one piece. 
Now, if you're going after that boho look and you wanna bring in warm texture into your space, I would suggest passing on this chair here. The harsh black metal with the woven texture just doesn't really go, and it's definitely not comfortable at all. There's even little holes in it because I don't think this material can hold up very well. Instead, I would choose these two chairs here. These will both add that boho warmth texture into your space, but in two different ways. This Buskbo round chair is a little bit more youthful in its design. It's a lighter tone and it kind of gives off more of a sculptural look to it. I think it's a really cool chair that you can actually get this cushion with as well. And then this Homestead chair is a great option if you have a traditional home and traditional furniture, but you want to add in that warmth and texture and a little bit more of a playful look with this bohemian style. I think this chair gives off an elevated bohemian look and the chair arm swoop is gorgeous. It's traditional, it's elevated, and it's something that I think would be a great addition to a space with just some added cushions for extra comfort. Onto Ikea's coffee table section. Now I know it's tempting to just buy the Ikea LAC coffee table because it's the most affordable option. It's super simple in its design. It comes in different colors and sizes, but I would suggest passing on the Ikea LAC coffee table and picking something with a little bit more style to it, like the Listerby series. The Listerby coffee tables are some of my favorite. I love the swoopy round shape of them. They actually have a substantial weight to them, which makes them look and feel more expensive. And I just like that they are a little bit more sculptural. They're well thought out, they have some storage underneath, and they actually come in two different finishes. So you can get something light and airy, like this wood finish, or you can get it in that rich chocolate brown finish. I love using round side tables, round coffee tables, and the rounded edges just really work and give your space a little bit more flow as well. Onto the Ikea throw pillow section. There are so many different throw pillow covers here to choose from, but I always buy my inserts here. Let me tell you one thing, stay far away from the inner throw pillow insert. This is floppy and loose. Your pillows won't stand up straight and they're really thin. Instead, I would get the Fializa throw pillow insert. You can tell from this comparison that this is so much thicker. Your pillows will stand up tall. They'll be choppable and comfortable and it's such a better option. Now, of course, all of this is just based on my own opinion, but if you're rug shopping at Ikea, I would suggest not choosing the large pattern rugs here. They tend to go out of style faster and they're just not always very on trend but they do have some great neutral textural rugs like these woven knit braided rugs and the low halls jute rug. This is a great indoor outdoor durable material that is perfect if you wanna add that warmth to your home. Now, if you're shopping for a media unit, I would suggest skipping by all of the pre-made media units and actually building your own with the Besta system. The Besta is pretty much a plain shell that's completely customizable. So you can get different sizes to begin with and they come in different colors, white, walnut, and espresso. You can get these tall units, long, narrow units, and pick your own door finishes, drawer finishes, and feet. So there's so so much to customize with this piece and you can really create a media unit that's going to work for your space. So if you're looking for something very specific, the best of storage system might be your best bet. If you want to create that luxurious, mature designer look in your bedroom, the Malm bed is something you should stay away from. It's just their most basic, simple bed at Ikea. I'm sure most of us have bought this bed at some point in time. There's nothing wrong with this bed, it just doesn't give off that elevated look. So instead of this simple Malm bed, I think you can opt for something that has a little bit more style and structure to it. This is the Idanis bed. It has these gorgeous tape feet and it's actually an upholstered bed. It comes in two different colors, this dusty light pink and the dark gray. You can get this bed with storage underneath like this or you can get it without storage. I always think storage is best in a bedroom. Even if you don't want to store extra clothes in there, you can store a bedding and sheets and pillows and it just will help clean up the look of your room. I love the wood tapered legs on this bed and it just has an overall elevated, timeless and traditional look to it. 
If you're looking for an affordable dresser, I would say Ikea is the place to go. They also have the Malm dresser here. So it's the matching set to the bed. And again, this is one of those things that I would pass on. It's been around forever. Everyone has this dresser and it's just becoming a little bit overdone. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It functions great. It looks pretty good, but I think you can elevate your dresser to something like this. This is the Idanis line, similar to the bed. I like that this dresser is very simple, but it has a classic design to it. You can always change out these knobs for different knobs so you have some flexibility there, but the overall design of it is just a bit more elevated than the Malm. So if you had the choice between the two, I would recommend going with the Idanis line. Ikea is always a go-to place when it comes to affordable bedding, but just like the rugs, I would stay away from the large pattern duvet covers here. Patterns tend to lock you into a design and a color palette that you might wanna change up over time. Sometimes it's better to have simple bedding that can last through different changes. If you wanna do a pattern, choose something that's very subtle. This is a new duvet cover that just came out. They have it in a cream and this beautiful sage. It's something super minimal that you could layer patterns and colors into. But if I were to choose, I would definitely recommend their simple plain bedding. I think crisp white duvet covers are timeless and they allow so much flexibility when it comes to designing your bedroom. This is a new duvet cover that they have here that's a linen material. It has that natural wrinkle in there, but it's really soft and luxurious looking. And if you want a little bit of simple and a little bit of pattern, here's a great way of doing it. There's actually two duvets on this bed. One one pattern duvet cover and one simple classic duvet cover. The top duvet kind of simplifies the pattern and creates an elegant look. Ikea does a great job with their lighting. There's so much selection, but there are some pieces I would stay away from, including these wall sconces. These are plug-in wall sconces, but the look of them is just a little bit too shiny and plasticky for my liking. Instead, I would choose a very similar shape with this woven plug-in wall sconce. It looks just like a crate and barrel wall sconce at a fraction of the price. So highly recommend that piece. I've also loved this wall sconce for a while. It's another plug-in wall sconce. It has this long arm that's so dramatic and the big bulb at the end is just amazing. So if you're looking for a statement piece, that's a great buy. I'm all about layered lighting and two-in-one pieces, but for a light fixture, I just don't think that's a good idea. A light fixture can really pull together your space and be a beautiful design element, and this lamp is not it. So I would suggest staying away from this lamp if you're looking for a floor lamp or task lamps. Instead, I would opt for this task lamp. I like that this is architectural, it's sculptural, but it's super simple and modern. It's something that you can kind of slip into a corner of a room room and it's not going to be overwhelming, but it's going to provide you with the light that you need for a task. I love that this can pair nicely with a table lamp that will give you more ambient lighting, but this can be that little bit of functionality that you need for task lighting. So it's simple, the top can move in different directions, and it can be that perfect little piece to add to any style home. Now onto the wall art section. I think if you're decorating and styling your home, you should stay far away from the wall art at Ikea. They do an amazing job of providing large scale pieces and large canvases at a great price, but a lot of these pieces have been in Ikea for years. So many people have them that it just doesn't give you that special unique look in your home. So instead of buying the large scale canvases, I would actually suggest buying their large scale frames. That way you can find art elsewhere, you can get your own art printed, or you can make your own art and frame it in the Ikea frames. I suggest getting Ikea frames because they are such a good price and you can get large scale frames for less. I love the quality of them, especially the Riba frame. It's my favorite. You can take the mat out or keep it in, but it really allows some flexibility there to really create gorgeous wall art. 
And lastly, let's talk IKEA plants. They have a mix of real and artificial plants in here. And if you're going to choose the artificial route, you have to choose something that looks as real as possible. And this fake bamboo tree just does not look real. I think this is one piece that you should stay away from. It definitely adds that greenery in your home. It has a lot of height to it, but it doesn't have that realistic look to it. The same thing goes for the artificial fiddle leaf fig tree. This one is just a little bit too short, so it's not gonna give you that grand scale in your space. And the leaves are just very shiny, vibrant, and thick. So it doesn't give off that realistic look. The stems are also not very moldable, so you can't move them around and bend them to make it look more realistic. It kind of just stays together, which isn't very ideal for an artificial plant. So I would opt out of this type of plant and opt for something that's a little bit more natural looking. I find the best options at Ikea are actually their eucalyptus plants. Artificial eucalyptus is usually pretty matte, less vibrant in its colors. So the cooler tone of it just creates more of a realistic look. So I think if you're gonna do a fake plant, usually artificial eucalyptus is a good choice. It looks pretty realistic, especially when you pot it into something else. So these are all pre-potted plants that you can put into a larger pot. But of course you can always get real plants at Ikea, especially in the summer. There's always so much more selection, especially when it comes to their large trees. I always find really cute plants here, so I definitely recommend checking out Ikea to find all of your little house plants. All right, so that's it for today's shopping. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope this gave you a better idea on what you should stay away from at Ikea and what you should absolutely buy. It's such a large, overwhelming store, so it can be very hard to make decisions. So I hope this video really helped narrow down all the specific things that you should get at Ikea. Anyways, if you enjoyed watching and found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button and make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. Click that red subscribe button down below and make sure you guys have my notifications turned all the way on so you're first to see the next video. Love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!